if I put your name on court, as the Mr. Pixit of this time. Mr. Mr. Pixit. I wish you well, and I hope you continue to fix it right for the Nigerian people. Thank you. I call you Mr. Pixit because I feel the way you are fixing it is for the overall interest of the people of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So I wish you well, and I hope you continue to fix it right. My respected colleagues, members of the high table on this side, especially my own brother, the Prince of the Zazzao Emirates. Right Honorable Tajuddin Abbas. I want to believe this season, of course, I think is a serious season, a very golden opportunity for the extended family of Sarkin Zazzao Sidi late Sarkin Zazo Sidi. The history habit on our record that since your great-grandfather left the throne about 100 years now, no one from your family got it right to be back on the throne until this year when your brother got to be appointed as the Emir of Zazo. 100 years after your great-grandfather was, 100 years now, one of you from that very great family became the Emir of Zazel. I want to congratulate this great family that by God's grace and by the support of the members elect of the 10th House of, Assembly, House of Representatives, this great family will once again witness a presiding officer of the Green Chambers of the House of Representatives. <laughs> I dub my car for you because I also double as a Sardana of Rano. I'm a member. I'm a member. I'm a member of the same traditional institution that we all respect in the great northern Nigeria. Mr. Speaker, I have to apologize that I have forgotten to recognize you as a prince, a kingmaker. Yes. A council member of the ancient Yahudi kingdom. Sadoki Yahudi. Sadoki of Yahudi. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, for, for want of time, let me not derail into other talks. The business of today, especially at this moment, is of history making. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, especially my colleagues, members elect that are facing me eyeball to eyeball. Don't imagine that my appearance here is by accident. For those of you who think I'm daydreaming, you are not daydreaming, this is reality. <laughs> this is reality. Before you, it's right, Honorable Al-Hassan Ado Dogua, the chief whip of the eighth House of Representatives, and today, by God's grace and by the leave of my members and the overall leave of the Speaker of the House, the Majority Leader of the Ninth House of Representatives. <laughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I am here to put on the record that not just from today, that right from day one, when the NWC, the National Working Committee of my party, put it on the table that they have come up with a zoning arrangement. And after zoning, with all sense of morality, microzone it to the Northwest and micro, micro zone it to my brother. <laughs> right Honorable Taju Din Abbas, representing Zaria Federal Constituency from Northwestern Nigeria. As from that date and day, I therefore called my bid to contest for the speakership of the 10th House of Representatives off. <laughs> I had to do that because I'm a man of establishment. I had to do that because I'm also a beneficiary of same kind of arrangement then and today. I have benefited from party arrangements 
I, am a, I personally benefited from this kind of zoning arrangement. That was what gave me the position of the chief whip of the eighth house of representatives, even when there were issues. Still, the zoning held sway. Today, I am the majority leader of the House of Representatives, courtesy of the, of the National Working Committee of my party. My great brothers and sisters, courtesy demands that it's only fair. I also stand by the position of the National Working Committee and the leaders of my great party. It's not like the, it's not like the, the table is standing against me, no. The fact is that time has come for me to also pay back. And I think paying back in these circumstances means a great, a great responsibility that I must have to honor and oblige. I rise before you today, this good evening, Mr. Speaker, my boss, right on Obufemi Bajabia Miller. And around me, flanking around me, is right on Abdul Rahim. And my other friend here, Honorable Maki Eleman. We are here individually and collectively stepping into the shoes of this great campaign. We all wanted to be speakers, not because we knew that you can have several speakers. At every given point in time, there, only, there, there only can be one speaker. And in the light of this disposition, I want to say on behalf of my great men here around me that we have individually and collectively decided to come and surrender our bid to become speaker this time around to the great party, the APC. And we also differ on record to our great gentleman that was picked by the party to run for the speakership officially on behalf of our great party, right on the party team. We are also of the opinion that the selection process of right honorable Tajuddin Abbas was not in any way biased. We are also quite aware that the person of Tajuddin Abbas and of course his running mate, the deputy speakership candidate, they are qualified to hold their respective offices. Tajuddin Abbas, Tajuddin Abbas, I think is not only a PhD holder, but he's someone that we can respect because of his quintessential character and also his intelligence and the level of maturity he has always displayed on the floor of the House of Representatives. Of course, he has not had the opportunity to serve as a principal officer, but the likes of Tajuddin on the floor of the 8th, of the 6th, 8th, 9th Assembly were also leaders in their own right. They have always contributed to the success of the different dispensations they have served in as members or chairmen of respective committees. And like my speaker can rightly say here, they have always served as pillars to the body of principal officers of the 8th and the 9th House of Representatives. The choice of Tajuddin Abbas for me, Abbas for me is an excellent one. He can do the job rightly. He is competent. He is competent. And he has the right temperament to lead the 10th House of Representatives and even beyond. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, like I've earlier said, I, hear, I therefore rise here along with my two good brothers to declare our commitment to continue the journey from here. And we are now on board. We were in our respective bits for so many other reasons. But like the people in the airport may say, that there is always what they call a connecting flight. We have finished the other journeys this far, and we are here to connect. <laughs> we, are here, we are here to connect. And I want to believe when a connecting passenger gets on board, he is counted as a passenger and nothing else. 
and he will never be subjected to any let or hindrance, and he will be, uh, he will be able to catch up with all the benefits of able passenger on board. <laughs> when especially, when especially you have the senior captain on this flight as someone who can really navigate the terrain very well. This is one terrain that we have a captain in the driver's seat, in the pilot seat. And this captain is no other person than the Speaker of the Ninth House of Representatives, Right Honorable Femi Bajabi Abdullah. He has been able to navigate and pilot very well the Ninth House of Representatives. And with him on this board, because he too is a member elect, I will presume he will also be a member of the 10th National Assembly. So you have a very senior captain on the flight that I will expect the flight will go on smoothly without turbulence. Yes. Now that we are joining this flight, Mr. Speaker, and the captain of this flight, I want to use your, I want to beg for your indulgence to tell co-passengers that this flight is for the collective benefit of all of you. When you have a cause to complain, you let us know. When you need any extra services, you let us know. You will be accorded. And I want to assure, I want to assure you, I want to assure you, eh? <laughs> yes. I want to assure you, I want to assure you that as long as you have your seat belts on, this flight is a non-stop flight. It will get to 2027 20, and beyond. Because I will expect that the Northwest should serve for speakership two times. <laughs> distinguished ladies and gentlemen, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I thank you so much for accepting us in good faith. And I want to assure you that the three of us here will join hands with you to deliver this project. It's a project for each and every one of us and I believe no one will be discriminated against. Nobody will be discriminated. Everyone will be a beneficiary to this collective project. And by God's grace, we will get it right. Mr. Speaker of the Ninth House of Representatives, and by God's grace, my brother, who will be the Speaker of the Tenth House of Representatives, I think on a lighter mood, my only fear, my only fear, my only fear, my only fear about this project, when I came in, I saw my people with the red caps all over. They have also complied. <laughs> that did not bother me because I knew they really have to belong where they will succeed. But when I later noticed carefully that the, DS. the deputy speaker incoming is wearing red, <laughs> and the incoming speaker is wearing maroon, which is close to red. <laughs> I became jittery. I now, I now pray to God that may Allah save me on this flight. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not pleased to be Thank you very much, the leader of the House of Rep